Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Winback, and on today's episode, we're going to be doing something new with the build stuff. Uh, instead of getting a character all the way to the later levels in the game, I am going to take you into one that I have early on. And hopefully that'll be enough detail for everybody to get what is going on with the build, how it works in all the stages of the game, and then figure out for yourself if you want to play it and use it and all that stuff. Once we get it capped out to the level 100, I'll put the Grim Tools link with the finalized build and all that stuff in it. But this is a YouTube video, though, so feel free to like, comment, subscribe your heart out. And we will get started on this brand new, squeaky clean, never been to ultimate build. This is my Spellbinder. His name is Whistler. He has a jolly old time working sun up to sunset in the mines. He is uh, is going to be mostly a cold aether and vitality damage, I'm going to say caster. And he is mostly going to be about this ability down here called Drain Essence. I have got absolutely tons of points into this ability at the moment. 22 points in that bad boy already. A lot of those points come from the gear. And then we are using Siphon Souls as a backup. And then Kalidor's Tempest as a backup as well. With a couple passive points thrown all over the place. But mostly, mostly up until this point, we haven't had a whole lot of need to put points into other stuff. This ability is way, way cooler than uh, Aether Ray, in my opinion, mainly because the animation's way cooler, but it does kind of operate the same way. I will give you that. Once I get up to level 50, I'll be able to pick up a movement ability that might synergize with this a bit well. Right now, I have absolutely zero movement whatsoever, so running is all the stuff that I have to do. Next video, though, we will definitely have ourselves a glyph to get around. I'm not technically going to be using a shield for this build as the game goes on, but uh, I also don't want to not have uh, a monster infrequent in my offhand slot right now. And the spectral shield from Act 2 is the best thing for us. But uh, the big parts are the 2 meter target area and the minus 30% energy cost. The, I mean, the multi-targeting stuff, uh, the other effects of the shield are really cool, but the big one is the energy cost reduction because this, just like Aether Ray, will eat so much energy that you will lose it almost immediately. Uh, so the shield helps with that immensely, and that's the whole reason that we need it, and that we will probably need it for a while until something better comes along in the offhand. But... The shield's not permanent. I want some cool offhands. I've got some cool offhands in my box already for the later game. But, you know, obviously, we're only level 30. We can only do so much. I haven't figured out the devotions yet for this class. So, those are still coming to me. At the moment, all I've got is a Tsunami and the Hangman's Noose. But, I don't know if those are going to be permanent. I don't know quite yet what I want to do in the devotion category. I haven't chosen an outer uh, devotion just yet to build towards, but uh, if you weren't aware, there is a small side quest down here on the bottom side of the rotting croplands. These people have trapped a demon child in a cave, and you can go enter the cave to punch that child in the face and uh, get some cool experience. I thought this little interaction was really cool. I mean, Grim Dawn is actually full of these little lore interactions in the world building and all that stuff. I, this could have been a, a pretty interesting story, though. I wish it, it uh, had a little bit more detail to it, but, you know, they gotta add a million other things to this game to make it cohesive, so I can appreciate that uh, it was even there to begin with. I mean, it seems like an oversight. Thank you for releasing my daughter by killing her and the demon inside her. Man, everybody is out to get you. Demons everywhere. They're going to possess your children. They're going to make them eat their vegetables, grow up big and strong to overthrow you in the new world order. Uh, right now, my gear doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, mostly, I've just 
found a bunch of stuff that has drain essence points going for it, and that's what we're using to uh, to keep the points up. If we run across blues that are any good to swap out from our green stuff, we certainly will. But at this stage of the game, it's uh, kind of like running a marathon between gear spikes. Some will be really good, some will be really bad, and a lot of it will just be sold off anyway. Because we gotta get that money for every character that we play. That is the most important currency for some reason, even when you are way, way late in the game. Millions of iron will keep you nice and healthy, and you can buy gear, you can buy components, you can buy crafting stuff, you gotta have the scrap for days. I sincerely hope it works out the way that I'm thinking it will though, but uh, it is pretty cool. Uh, I like just being able to drain the soul from every enemy. And it even, I mean it doesn't do bad damage to bosses either. Uh, it's a little bit less effective on bosses, to be certain, but Still, I can pretty much sit there and just face tank stuff at the moment. Obviously, I don't think that is going to carry over into uh, Elite and Ultimate, but everything that happens in Normal is the most fun, typically, in this game, because you just go absolutely apeshit god mode, and that is the best part. It's cool. I like the way that it looks. And you can't tell me that that's a bad thing when I'm playing in Normal, because I will... Stick my fingers in my ears and stop listening to you. Aesthetics are the whole reason to play video games. Unless you're like, not one of those people who cares about those things. In which case, why are you playing video games? Why don't you go play chess or something? And this is kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen as the game progresses. So I will definitely need more points into... Uh, Soul Siphon and Kalidor's Tempest to kind of round out the damage because as it is right now, as much damage as Drain Essence is doing, I don't have the right gear to make it do like insane damage and it is taking me a long time to kill some bigger enemies. So once I can do that with my other abilities and the rest of my kit, I'll be much better off. I'm also holding on to a bunch of points. Um, for my levels at the moment, my skill points, uh, because I haven't decided where exactly those are going to go. I don't know if I want to put those into passives or if I want to start filling out Siphon Souls or Kalidor's Tempest just yet. I do have Mastery Bars to fill up too, so we're pretty low on those as well, but I'm picky. Choosy moms, choose Jif, and being patient on your skill points. Is that a is that still a slogan? Do they still advertise peanut butter on TV? Does anybody watch TV anymore? That's that's weird to think about. Uh, if you are not aware, the uh, the location of the Dermapterin hive den always will show up in one of these fields. Uh, I guess they're they're fields, farming fields, crop fields. But it will always show up in this location of the map in one of, I think it's like four or five spots. So, now you may have noticed a little dog following me around on occasion. He is a summon from the Marrow Band. Uh, we got that a while ago. And as it stands right now, he is mildly helpful. Uh, he does pull aggro. The, the Guardian does pull aggro from bosses and bigger enemies at times. So... Uh, he lets me have room to breathe to eat more souls with my uh, my drain essence here. So when he decides to make an appearance, uh, he's definitely helpful. Not going to be a static part of the build, because I don't want to have any pets, but still. Not going to say no to any little puppy who wants to follow me around and distract the bad guys while I kill them. And as of right now, I'm just in the swarming hatchery because I want the experience. Uh, the skittering den is the one that you need to actually go find the devotion shrine in this level. Uh, that is in one of my earlier videos as well, the walkthroughs on where to find those. But, 
Uh, the Skittering Den is the second location inside the Dermatrian Hive here, and there is a fake wall in there that will take you down to the mountain depths. Now, one thing about this build that you might have a little bit of trouble with when you're starting out, since we're level 30 at the start of this uh, kind of video series, you don't get to see the things that I struggled with early on. Um, I guess from like level 1 to 15, things were really rough because uh, energy consumption was very difficult. Uh, I would run out of energy constantly. And because I was putting so many points into Drain Essence, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of just AoE clearing ability. So, uh, it's, it's a little bit tough because you do want to have as many points into this ability as you can to do all the damage. But um, at the same time, clearing rooms is tough. Um, so you may have to go ahead and spend points in something like uh, Electra's Flash Freeze if you need really big wave clear. Or you can kind of uh, start off with Kaldor's Tempest. I don't love Kaldor's Tempest as a damage dealing ability, but it does definitely help. And if you are taking the knockdown modifier, you are going to give yourself a lot more breathing room. But you can see it now. I even have a 30% uh, a reduction in energy cost on this build. And I'm still eating energy like it's fucking macaroni. And I am six years old again. And we even have four ectoplasms on right now. Actually insane how much energy that we have uh, buffed up and are still losing all over the place. We are just hemorrhaging energy. Actually, let's put a point into spirit just because. So, what is that? That's 20% uh, energy and then 3 energy regen per second. So that is 80% additional energy on my uh, rings and amulets and helmet. And that is 12... No. Yeah, that's 12 um, additional energy regenerated per second. So it's like Ooh, this build is not meant to have a good time when it comes to energy regeneration. Uh, but the fact that I'm just standing around through a lot of these fights is pretty, we'll say bad. It's probably not going to last very much longer, especially as the game goes on. I'd say after level 50 or 70 or so, we'll have more trouble standing still and using just the channel of the Drain Essence. So... Once that happens, maybe the energy depletion levels off a little bit, but at the same time, I also don't want that to happen because my DPS is going to drop significantly if I can't just stand here and channel. We do also have the Mirror of Ariactes. I only put one point in Mirror because I don't really need much more than that. As long as it's absorbing all the damage in a set time frame, um, I can stand there and channel through that entire time frame and deal maximum damage. She does so much damage. This is more like what I'm going to have to do as uh, the game progresses. She stunned me. Oh, I'm dying. I've backed myself into a corner. Oh, oh. My, my stalwart guardian is guarding me in the most stalwart manner. I pressed the mirror. I did not need to. Thank God for that little dog. He is the actual MVP. Without him, I would have been chased around to this little hole for quite a while and probably punched to death. So, fantastic stuff there. I need to figure out what I'm going to do with these points because I don't have enough points to get to where I want to be. This, I'm not sure about this fight. Uh... This fight is always a little bit tough for any character that doesn't have the resistance for it. Oh my god, we're just absolutely wrecking him. Look at all the health he's losing. I don't want to use this. There it is. We'll use the Mirror of Ariactes for his big salvo ability. And now he goes down. Fuck yeah. The amalgamation is dead. 
I did pick up Mark of Torment. Uh, I had enough points to pick this bad boy up. And we basically have another uh, invincibility button. So while this build, uh, while this class may not be the most movement capable, uh, it is definitely full of stuff that will just let us live forever. I will give you my skills, devotions, and abilities, all that stuff real quick before we go if you need them. But we have got 24 points in Drain Essence at the moment. We are converting the Aether damage to Cold Damage with Grave Chill. Hungering Reach is uh, 5 points. It did have some gear points into it up to this point, but no longer. Just using the uh, chance to affect multiple targets. We'll probably put some more points in that later in the game. And then only 1 point in decomposition again for the gear points. So that is sadly no longer... Helping. But it does increase the damage, so we probably should. Wow, looks like it increases it quite a bit. We've got three points into Siphon Souls, just to make sure that the AoE is big enough and it is good. We've got one point into Spectral Binding and Spectral Wrath. That will eventually be a very good aura to have on. It's just not at the moment really important. Mark of Torment is our second invincibility ability, really important. Uh, Reaping Strike, not so much. Probably going to take that out of rotation. We've got Iskandra's Elemental Exchange because this is going to give us Energy Regen and Energy Leech. We're going to have some points into that from gear as well. And we are converting Physical Damage to Elemental. Probably going to remove that as well. Not super sure why that is on, if we're being honest. One point into Ariactes because that's what we do there. Kalidor's Tempest, another three points for the damage. And then one point into Wrath of Agravix for the knockdown. Then we've got Inner Focus for the Spirit percentage increase, as well as the Offensive Ability increase. And then lastly, we've got one point into Arcane Will because this is giving us more energy regen when we drop below 75% health. And it's giving us a pretty, pretty decent bump to damage as well. For no oceans, I've got uh, Tsunami, and then we've got Gallows, so that is where that is at. And then I've got six points available. I haven't decided on Devotions yet, so don't hold me to this. Next video, I will have these completed and figured out. Uh, well, maybe not completed, but I'll have a map for them for you at least. Uh, but for the time being, I don't know what I want to do. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out. We'll be back next time with the oh, the next iteration of this build and that's probably going to be the formula for build guide videos moving forward uh, we'll do level 30 video a level 50 video a level 70 and then a level 100 with the grim tools link once everything is fleshed out and delivered upon so anyway peace out everybody see you next time